All right, so you're probably wondering why are we even checking this thing out? It's called the Segway Mini Pro by Ninebot. Ninebot's a company that acquired Segway back in 2014. And you probably know Segway's reputation for making those Segway scooters that you're used to seeing at the mall being used by mall security. But the Segway Mini Pro is essentially a more slimmed down version of that. And it's also consumer friendly. Now, a lot of people will probably tell you this is a hoverboard of some kind, and we know the kind of reputation hoverboards have. They were big last holiday season, but after safety issues, some accidents, and also them being banned in specific cities, it didn't go well for hoverboards. So Segway believes that this product is better. It's actually the next step in the evolution of personal transportation, just because it utilizes various technologies to make it far better and it also has a smartphone aspect because it's connected via Bluetooth to your device. The first thing that really drew me into the Segway Mini Pro is its design. It's definitely a lot more stylish and aggressive and that's evident with the black paint job and red accents found throughout the device. It's also a lot beefier, hulkier than most hoverboards because the foundation, the frame itself, is built from a super light, durable magnesium alloy. It gives it a lot of strength and integrity. And on top of that, too, you could sense that there's something more to this because it's put together by two 10 half inch pneumatic air filled tires, and they are substantial to say the least. There are also a lot of LEDs found throughout the Mini Pro. It's smart enough that at night it'll turn on the front LEDs to help illuminate the path. You have also LEDs for when you're braking or reversing, turning left or right. And all of them are actually customizable, so you can choose specific colors for different actions. What differentiates it from other hoverboards is the center column that sticks out. So basically, you use this center column to actually move left or right. You steer towards specific directions. And it kind of rests right at your knees. So you're basically tilting your knees to the left or right to move towards those directions. And I think this is a far safer implementation than a hoverboard where you're basically tilting your, your feet one foot back, one foot forward, and kind of throws you a little bit off balance. This doesn't really impede the balance with the operation. Another thing that differentiates this is its smartphone integration. It connects via Bluetooth. You download the Ninebot app to your Android smartphone. It allows you to customize the LED lights. You could calibrate the unit. You could also obtain diagnostics information. You could even control it remotely with the app. And there's also an anti-security alarm feature that will notify you in the event that it's being tampered with or moved around. But of course, this all hinges on the range of your Bluetooth connectivity because once you're out of that range, if someone touches it, you're not gonna get that notification until that connection is reestablished. And at that point, when it does, they're probably long gone with the unit. I've been using this for over a week now, and I gotta say, for someone who's ever used a hoverboard, you'll naturally fit in. You'll easily get the balancing right away. If this is your first time using a personal transportation device that relies on balancing, it might have a slight learning curve, but it's pretty simple, and I found it to be pretty safe for the most part. So just like most hoverboards, it's all about finding that center of gravity. Why don't you establish that? Getting on, getting off, moving forward, moving back, turning is a breeze. And I had a lot of fun using it actually. There were only two situations where I found using the Mini Pro a little bit troublesome. And the first one is uneven terrain. That will pose some issues just because if you're moving very quickly, um, you might be thrown off balance. And secondly, is going downhill at a fast speed. Now, going uphill at fast speed is not a problem because I'm leaning forward uh, with the unit. But going downhill very fast, uh, you kind of get a sense of being unbalanced. And you also want to just play it safe and be cautious when you're doing that. I did, however, have one incident where I got off the Segway Pro Mini Pro, but my t-shirt kind of got caught on the center column and then the Mini Pro just started turning left and it just, you know, kind of grazed me on my ankle. So I guess you got to be careful about the center column snagging you. A lot of people are going to wonder whether it's a practical form of personal transportation. 
Now I personally use a folding bike whenever I go into the city. It's just more reliable and it's easy to transport as well. And the Segway Mini Pro is in the same caliber. It's at 28 pounds, so roughly the weight of your ordinary bike, but it's still bulkier and heavier than most skateboards or scooters. It does have a top speed of 10 miles per hour and a range of 14 miles, which is great. But my biggest issue with the Mini Pro is that it's not as easy to carry around. There is a bar that you extend from the center column to pull it around, but when you're trying to bring it upstairs or bring it downstairs or just carrying it around in the subway, it's a lot, there's a lot of effort involved in that. And on top of that, of course, this is battery powered, but in the event that a battery dies, you're basically gonna have to lug this around wherever you go. The last thing you probably wanna know, is it worth buying? It has a sticker price of $1,300, but over on Amazon right now, it's on sale for $1,000. I know, $1,000 is still a lot of money, but you have to think about those commercial Segway scooters, which start at $5,000 easily. So the savings you get here with the Mini Pro is definitely substantial. Still, at the end of the day, it's just still too much of an expensive investment to spur that type of adoption on a mass scale and still going to be seen largely as a luxury thing. Now, for half the cost, you have alternatives like a decent folding bike, electric scooter, or some other electric transportation device that will offer more versatility for those who really need to cover distances. I'll be the first one to say that I had a lot of fun using the Mini Pro. It's cool, it's fast, gets you from point A to point B relatively quickly, but it's just still too expensive for me to like. So if you guys want to learn more about this device, you could check out our website, androidauthority.com. This is John V, signing out.